soon beyond this transitory happening that is the Biennale. One might argue that this is a petri dish right here, a social sculpture in the lineage of Joseph Boyce, a living art project that is reconfiguring social relations and rescripting social life. And yes, it has discrete works of art to look at, but as a whole, we are modeling possible universes. To quote Boriard again, art must learn to inhabit the world in a better way, instead of trying to construct it based on a preconceived idea of historical evolution. Otherwise put, the role of artworks is no longer to form imaginary and utopian realities, but to actually be ways of living and models of action within the existing real. Long live art that is embodied. Yes, long live art that is embodied. Art that uses reality as its medium. Art that dares to leave the containers of representation and instead try to affect real change in the world. And as travelers here to this living art project, as newcomers, you are forced increasingly to feel that you are participants in its development and you are called upon to be responsible for what becomes its framework. And no, Bombay Beach doesn't have the sheen and shimmer of floating cylinders in the sky. We do not divorce the terra from the territory. In fact, we really can't. Yes, it's toxic. Yes, there's trash. It's hot. It smells sometimes. And yet, this small, strange town, 45 minutes away from anywhere, a half mile by a half mile, for me and a lot of other kitty cats around here, <laughs> holds the potential of a Petri dish. And so I invite you to dig deeper, come back. You, experts in varying fields with deep sources of knowledge and information. Come back and take part in a grand experiment. I'm gonna riff, I'm going off. Notes because um, this is some of the work I've started to do as a systems architect alongside everyone else. Like this is not this is a, like a an emergent document, um, and this is like just to give you a little inspiration of the variety of different things that are going on in this weird part of the world you find yourself in right now. And honestly, there's so much missing from here. Um, really, what a big thing that's missing is the San, San Andreas Fault line should be on here because we are at, uh, sitting on the I beginning of the San Andreas Fault. Yeah. yeah. Yes, baby, you changed the mirror board, yes. Um, yeah, I, I have not much to say about this other than this could be infinite. Like, it keeps going. The architecture, mythology, poetry of the sea of which we little humans are like so small and so is art isn't that funny it's like there's so much else going on anyways um you can ask me more about that at another time i have nothing more to say but wanted to include it <laughs> this should be like a poster somewhere yeah yeah because what is required here is a theater without spectators where those in attendance learn from as opposed to being seduced by images. Where they become active participants as opposed to being passive voyeurs. Emancipation begins when we challenge the opposition between viewing and acting, when we understand that the self-evident facts that structure the relations between saying, seeing, and doing themselves belong to the structure of domination and subjection. It begins when we understand that viewing is also an action that confirms or transforms the distribution of positions. The spectator also acts, she observes, she compares, she interprets, she links what she sees to a host of other things that she has seen on other stages, in other places. She composes her own poem with the elements 
of the poem before her. And so, dear friends, what poems will you write with what is presented before you? I dare you to unleash your creativity and please share and present your findings. Mm -hmm. I'll give you one more poem of mine in case you need like still a little bit more inspiration. <laughs> I woke up one morning and the sun was shining from the wrong side of the sky. And I'm trying to fly, but all I can do is cry because I'm just a girl lighting cigarettes in front of a fireworks store, waiting on the dock for a boat to come and take her to another world. But there is no other world. There's just another way to live. Shit. I'm just a fragmented self who longs to be complete. Even a broken clock is right twice a day, and I applaud the escalation of decay so we can face the full horror of liberty. And yes, life is a collective impossibility, but you should never settle for who you are. Don't worry. The spirit will catch you when you fall. And by spirit, I mean me. I will catch you when you fall. But my recklessness is hitting a glass fucking wall. Cheap thrills don't thrill me anymore. And I'm scared that over time, all of our lives will be failures. I don't want to cope. I want to create. And it will be a long journey. But we have to confront the impossibility of fleeing. The sooner we do, the sooner we might remember the things we've been trained to forget. And I feel like it's embarrassing to try for things. But I also know I'm not the only person who's ever demanded more of the sunset. I know I'm not the only person scared of our philosophical horizon that tends towards an antagonistic future. Don't hate me when I say if you're not scared, you're not paying attention. And what you see is a result of what you have tolerated. Mm. And hard work is only worth it in the right conditions. Yeah. So long as we grow and progress and develop, we will dream in screenshots instead of landscapes. But we can be living paradoxes holding optimism and nihilism in the same embrace. We should learn to hope with teeth. We should utopia as hard as we fucking can. Yeah! I lost my place. And we should ask over and over for whom the future is being imagined. Earth? To be determined. Utopia? Apocalypse? Is it worse to hope or to despair? Who the fuck cares? Yeah. To that question, there can be only one answer. Yes, it is worse to hope or to despair. And so I ask you, are you doing enough? To wash the blood of fascism from your hands. To confront your unremitting crisis of faith. To make art that actually fucking does something. Are you emancipated spectators or passive voyeurs? Are you fighting for the definition of a new rationality? Fighting to direct otherwise indifferent individuals bent towards immutability and decay to a transcendence that starts in the dirt? The baggage of history is heavy, I know. But the liberation of a cumbersome past isn't worth anything if it isn't carried through to the benefit of the present and to the production of the future. God must become an activity in our consciousness. And people are just looking for a narrative to buy into, seriously. So let's write it together. Let's make a space for fantasy of a different kind. A cre crepuscular spectral alterity dedicated to the blessed history of the damned and the psychotics. A space for generosity where you don't have to ask for permission. A place where hope isn't abstract and where the expected is just the beginning.
And yes, I speak in riddles, in mysteries, in poetry, in subliminal seduction. Yes, I'm using artifice and representation to reach for the real, but maybe we can meet in the space before language. Woo. You scream at me and my friends add. Who do you think you are? What gives you the right? And I scream back at you. Why are you so easily satisfied? And what is it about reality that is so overbearing? And what if it takes violence to make something good? And really, this one's the kicker. What if you have to sacrifice part of your dream? What if you have to sacrifice part of your dream? I'm not afraid of violence or sacrifice. I promise to destroy you in the most beautiful, beautiful way possible because the threshold is a black hole and I can't tell you what's on the other side, but with a sly smile, I'll show it to you. I'll carve an open door and ask simply if you want to continue living in a closed world. So what should we start? A company or a revolution? A think tank or a commune? A religion? A government? A petri dish? Of course, we'll stay tethered to the earth and to the dirt and to the god of gravity and look up at the sky and wonder. In our dreams, we can traverse the beyond, but let's root our experiments in the possible. Upon the sublime encounter, we're sacrificed to a world of unlimited possibility. We must welcome the responsibility of leadership because that's who we are. Burn your maps, throw away the systems that are only here to keep you impotent and alive. Restore art to the service of the mind. Fight against progress, against progress, against progress. Against progress and instead towards a life worth living. <laughs> towards a politics of dream, urgent as the blueness of the sky. Mm. Oh yes, it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> the dream that it would feel like enough. Like sitting with a dying bee. Like the rush of blood to your cheeks. Like regular ground and warm mountains. Endless caverns. Those things that cannot be subsumed. The imagination of disaster. The breath of an ideal. The thrill of the infinite. The window you can't see out of. The residual contents of consciousness. The dilemma of distraction. The insistence on becoming. The possibility of a world behind the possibility of crossing the threshold. We end with a series of propositions. Are your dreams your own? Can art do anything at all? How do we live? How do we live in a world in which the terrorists are everywhere, where anyone can be radicalized. A world in which you've always been a prisoner. But if I told you it was possible to escape, what would you say? There's an alarm clock ringing in the distance. Do you remember? And the trouble is, you think you have time. But look, the bee has almost died. You're standing at the threshold. 
What are you waiting for?